Hello everybody, today I'm going to be talking about the Minolta Hematic F, a camera I picked up recently for only £10 and uh, the first thing I want to say about this camera is it is if you can get it for that price it's an absolute bargain, I'd say even £20 or £30 it's an absolute bargain because this is a great camera. Um, it's pretty much fully automatic, um, there's no adjusting your aperture or shutter speed on this camera, it's a bit like having a point and shoot camera but where this is brilliant is that the focusing is manual, which I prefer, um, especially when it's got a rangefinder patch like this camera has, um, which is just really superb. And actually, um, I'll talk about it later, but compared to other cameras that have uh, rangefinder patches of this sort of price range, um, this is, I would say, far superior. Okay, so actually, if you can get one of these cameras, and you can pay under £20, then you have got a fantastic camera for very little money. Um, I've owned a number of uh, sort of pocket, uh, small or medium sized rangefinders, and I've always been a bit um, disappointed by the rangefinder patch. And certainly, if you've ever picked up um, a Leica and you see how strong the rangefinder patch is, you can, you can really see easily when uh, your subject's in focus, but I was particularly, um, although it's a lovely camera, I was particularly disappointed with the rangefinder patch on the XA, to the extent that I um, I put a little bit of black tape there, and if you can see that over the range, over the, and that helps, so it's like a little hack that actually helps and make the rangefinder patch a bit stronger, um, because it's not, that, it really isn't that good on the XA, it's quite faint. So I picked up this little Hematic F, which, even in its day was a bit of a budget rangefinder, uh, kind of holiday camera. And I had a look through, uh, focus for the first time, and you focus using this tab here, which has got a really short throw. It's just literally there to there. But when I looked through for the first time and saw this incredibly sharp rangefinder patch, you can probably just about, if I just hold that up, uh, um, there. But um, anyway, I'll I'll see if I can cut in a clip of uh, me focusing with it, so you can see through the viewfinder. But um, it has got such a bright, clear rangefinder patch. Focusing is an absolute doddle, and with a short focus throw, um, you just nail focus really quickly. Uh, so I was really chuffed with it. Got it home. Really hoped that this thing would come to life. And um, the guy that sold it to me said it was his own personal camera from the 70s and he told me a little camera uh, hack for the batteries which I'll show you now which if you have own a Hematic F or you pick one up cheap and you want to test it this is how I did it so you open the door here so it needs um, two LR44 uh, batteries to work um, Traditionally, there would have been a battery in each chamber that was twice the thickness of an LR44, but I think half the current. So two L44s will get you around the right voltage for the camera. And I'll see if I can show you there. There they are in place. But you'll see to make up the gap that the spring underneath the battery, which would normally only poke out a little bit, um, I've, I've sort of stretched it out so it pushes the battery up against the side and keeps it in place so then I only need one on each. I've seen a lot of people put two on one side and then a piece of metal on this side to bridge the gap which you could do but I think it's actually easier just to put your two batteries in and just stretch them over and what I did to do that is I got a pair of tweezers and I, I basically gripped that spring there and pulled it out until the gap was shorter and then I was able to confidently push in an LR44 on each side and, and then the test was turning it over pressing the, the check button on the back and the light came on um, and so I've taken it out and I've shot a couple of rolls of film through it. Um, it's very, very sharp lens, takes great photos. Uh, I 
think that what I'll probably do next time is if I'm shooting ISO 200 film that I will probably set the ISO to 100. I think the voltage might be just very slightly uh, off even with that hack. So I want to let a little bit more light um, into the camera when I'm taking photos. Uh, I think it it might just be the, the this, this this camera, but I found sometimes with these old cameras you've got to shoot a few rolls and then sort of make a mental adjustment. Think, well, it's slightly underexposing the photos. So uh, in order to get a bit more light to the film, so it doesn't underexpose, then I will turn this little wheel on the front and I'll turn it to say a hundred or somewhere between 100 and 200, just let that little half stop, an extra stop of light through, um, just to brighten those pictures up. Some of the photos I took with this, um, we actually most of them were pretty much perfectly exposed, but there was a few where it was a bit darker, but because I could manually focus, every single photo was razor sharp. And um, I think with these cameras, they just seem to, uh, the, the way the rangefinder patch was built in and everything, they don't seem to kind of need adjustment or anything like that. It was just sharp right out of the box as soon as I uh, manually focused on things. So, okay, let's go through how it works. So you've got your rewind there and you can pull that up and it pops out the back like that. Um, you've got your sprockets there. And if I wind it on, see like that. And it's very quiet as well. Um, the noise of the camera's point probably being picked up a bit more in a quiet room like this, but if you're out and about and you're just taking pictures, and this is a really nice short throw on the to advance the film as well. Um, and as I showed you earlier, test the batteries like that. Um, you change the ISO by moving this wheel here, which you just turn, you sort of grip and turn. Um, and then, and obviously you've got your focus there, which you've got in feet and meters on there, so you can see that. And you're lining up with that red dot there on the front, like that. And then you've got this other collar on the lens, which didn't seem to really do anything and baffled me for a while. So I looked it up, found the original uh, manual for the camera and I'll, um, I'll have as a sort of pop up an image so it'll show you uh, what this, how this works. But basically when you've got a flash fitted, um, assuming it's ISO 100 film, then um, there's a little table that says, you know, set it to 20 to 65 there. Um, and that will get you from so many feet to so many feet. Uh, of flash when you're using a flash and then if your subject's further away then you'd set this collar to whatever the table recommended um, and that lets it know how much flash to use and that's all that's for. But if you're not using flash which I'm not going to be using on this camera then this collar is kind of irrelevant uh, you just manually focus make sure the ISO is set right um, battery check it and you're good to go when I um, got this camera uh, it didn't have any lens cap on it or lens filter and I had to try quite a few uh, until I found one that was the right size. Um, and the size you want is do, 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 46. And if you've got a 46 filter, you can put that on. There we go, like that. And you've got quite a nice little lens filter on it there, which looks great. I'm just using an old Nikon strap with this. I thought it looked quite nice, and I like uh, I like these old straps. They've got nice nickel um, attachments on them. Um, but uh, that's the one I used. And then when I, I'm not using that, and I got a, a similar size 46 uh, cap on the front like that. So to load film. Get some film. So, does anybody uh, else out there shoot Poundland film? Um, they don't sell it anymore, but when they did, um, I was always going in there and stocking up and buying as many rolls as I could afford. 
Um, and I've got a freezer full of it now. <laughs> and I'm glad I did because they don't do it anymore. And on eBay, people are asking sort of three, four, five pound a roll. Um, and you've got to remember, those people only paid a pound. Um, so, uh, yeah, if you manage to stock up on it, then you're doing well. Um, okay, so pop the film in like that, pop the down, I pull it over to the teeth, and get the film. Oops, oh, I'm making a hash of it today. Um, yeah, that's all right, that's in. And uh, it's hard to sort of do this whilst recording. Okay, so that's probably in. There we go, that's fine. Close the back. Wind out any extra tension, there we go. And fire off a couple of shots. And then I'm shooting, this is ISO 200 film. Because last time I felt that it edged on the side of underexposing, I'm going to put this on uh, around there, but between 100 and 200, and see how that goes. I've actually read with the Agfa Vista 200 film that a lot of people prefer the results uh, by shooting it at ISO 100 anyway, so it'll be quite fun to kind of see how these come out. Um, and that was it really, uh, that was my summary of the 1972 Minolta Hematic F. If you own one of these or thinking about getting one, let me know. Um, please like and share if you're enjoying these videos and I will make more. Thank you. Bye bye.